Greetings, everybody. Welcome to what is a final episode of The Real with a group from the LRT Sports Group. Uh, I'm going to be speaking with Kirsten Sires once again and Melvin Briggs II, and they're going to talk about a very important event that they have going on tomorrow evening. And to get out ahead of that event and get out ahead of the show a little bit, I wanted to really reach out to our audience, the audience that follows us on HSPN Sports and has listened to several podcasts, The Real, Get in the Game, and et cetera. I want you to really pay attention to what this event really entails. And so you'll hear more about it from Kirsten Sires and from Melvin uh, Briggs, but I wanted you to hear from me and know how much I'm emphasizing this. This event is called the HBCU Experience, and this is the brainchild of Melvin Briggs. That's why, why we have him on the show. Uh, but I want you to understand HBCU, meaning historically black colleges and universities, they are putting on a webinar. They are bringing some of their top brass in from several different sports to talk about the opportunities that exist on HBCU campuses and the opportunities that exist for athletes looking to participate in collegiate sports and intercollegiate sports. So um, here, here's the best part about this webinar. It's COVID priced, <laughs> meaning it's free. There's COVID pricing involved. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything other than time. And you guys know in this world, all you ever have in your possession is time, your talent, okay, and your treasure. There's no treasure coming out of your pocket for this. Just need your time and you get to, you know, you get to at least display your talent or put your talent in front of them. Get to this event tomorrow evening, Wednesday, October 14th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, what you'll need to do to register for this free event is to go online to lrt-sports.com, click on the workshops button or the tab right at the top of the page. When you get to that page, you will see a registration button. Click on the registration button and that will get you into the webinar for tomorrow, October 14th. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, you'll be able to actually submit questions ahead of time that if you want something answered by this panel, and I'm going to tell you who's on the panel, you'll be absolutely floored. Um, you'll be able to get questions answered by this panel, hopefully, and this is going to help you. If you're sitting around wondering what's going to happen to my college recruiting for next year or the years to come uh, with COVID and, and, and not being able to visit campuses, no camps, this type of thing, this gives you an opportunity to have a virtual uh, 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 information session where you can learn quite a bit about a, a great group of colleges called the HBCUs. So listen to this panel. Uh, they will have Southern University and A&M College head baseball coach Kendrick or Carrick Jackson. Sorry about that. Coach Carrick Jackson, head baseball coach at Southern University and A&M College. At North Carolina A&T, representing North Carolina A&T State University will be head women's volleyball coach Hal Clifton. Uh, from North Carolina A&T State University, director of the track and field program, you have Dwayne Ross, so he'll be there. He'll be in attendance at the webinar. Hampton University's assistant women's basketball coach, Kania Cole, if I'm saying that correctly, I sure hope I am. Uh, she will be on the panel. Bethune-Cookman University head basketball coach Ryan Ritter will be on the panel as well. And this will be kind of headlined by Virginia State University's head football coach, Reggie Barlow. Reggie is, is a pretty well-known name, um, had played several years in the NFL and is a Super Bowl 37 champion, I'm pretty sure, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that, that's your panel, moderated by Kirsten Sires of LRT Sports, the CEO and founder. Uh, Melvin Briggs will be on hand as well, too. Melvin Briggs the second. Uh, but um, nicely, Melvin and, and, and Kirsten uh, teamed up to do this last episode of the Real 100, so you'll hear more about it from him. We had a fun conversation about uh, all the possibilities that exist and, and who might be interested in such a campus. So I'm gonna tell you right now, red, white, black, yellow, polka dot, it doesn't matter. Uh, make sure that you get on this webinar and pay attention to the things that are being said, certainly about the opportunities more so than anything to play at an HBCU school um, and the academic opportunities that exist there as well too. So. Here you have it, The Real 100 with Kirsten Sires and Melvin Briggs II talking about the HBCU experience. Enjoy.
Okay, welcome everybody back to The Real 100. I'm David Hill, your host. We are a product of HSPN Sports, and it is exciting to have the two of these people on together. We talked with them separately earlier in the week, and now um, uh, the, hay is some, the hay is in the barn. You guys ever heard that expression before, or am I dating myself? I actually myself? haven't. I'm oh, not Kirsten, I'm dating myself. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I'm going to say the hay is in the barn and I'm going to just, I'm going to see how many people know what the heck I'm talking about or either that no. I'm going to sound like an old dude, but I love no, please tell me you've heard that expression. I've heard. Before. It's actually weird. It's actually weird. My high school coach actually used to use it all the time. So I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hay is in the farm today, boys. The hay is in the farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kirsten, you're going to love this one. I'm missing out. Yeah. You're going to love this one. Well, first, let me tell everybody who's who. Kirsten Sire, CEO and founder of LRT Sports, is back with us. Melvin Briggs, the second, who is in charge of business development, and uh, and I get to I get the chance to have you both now, okay, on on the show. And so, yeah, I said the hay is in the barn is a great old expression. Uh, Melvin, you know it. Kirsten, you may not, but here it is. What it means is that hey, the, the hour is upon us, right? The event is tomorrow, and and I and I did you guys a solid. I put the event back here behind me so you can see it. I like it. <laughs> so the HBCU experience tomorrow, uh, it will take place. Uh, it's very exciting. A um, lot of things to discuss with regard to that event. I'm thinking about a number of things. And Melvin, I'm going to go to you first, and 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 just kind of discuss a scenario. When I think about HBCUs, I think about some of the greats that have come through there. The great Eddie Robinson, for example, one of the best college coaches in history, coached at Grambling. And of course, we have the great Walter Payton was an HBCU player. And you have Jerry Rice as well, too. Melvin, are there any, are, do you feel like there are any others out there like those guys uh, just waiting to enter the HBCU setting? And is this an event that kind of could draw them in? Oh, co oh, completely, completely. I mean, HBCU, I mean, it's full of great potential. I think a lot of guys, they kind of, they kind of underestimate the talent that's out there. And it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot like Juco football, actually, you know, you have a lot of guys have a lot of raw talent who, yeah. who necessarily had received the power five uh, offers who ended up going to HBCU programs and, you know, they're there, they're making an impact, they're leaving legacies. I mean, believe it or not, Cam Newton's little brother, uh, he actually went to Howard for a little bit. Uh, he actually in the transfer out going to Auburn. Um, but you know what? Like, that, that's an example of how we have – there's great players who are able to kind of thrive in these programs and kind of take a look at the history of some of the, uh, some of the great HBCU products like Jerry Rice, like Walter yeah. Payton, like Deion Sanders. These are all yes. guys who really just want to come to work. You know, they really want to clock in. They want to put in their 110, you know. They want to do their job. They want to make others around them great. And they want to leave a legacy. And, you know, cool. part of the HBCU experience, not only academically and athletically, is to leave a legacy. That's really a big, crucial point that people really, really like to stress when it comes to talking about what does it mean to attend an HBCU. So those guys who are really looking to make an impact, who are looking to leave a lasting legacy, and who are looking to, to do something great, and HBCU is definitely a great place for you to be at. Yeah, you, you hit on so many different subjects. Of course, this is about athletes, but so many you know world leaders, great political leaders, uh, business leaders, the, the likes have all come out of HBCUs, uh, no doubt about that. Kirsten, I have a question for you, and that is uh, you were an intercollegiate um, athlete, female, uh, played two sports, <laughs> actually transitioned from one sport in, in the same school, one sport to another. I thought that was a great yeah. conversation <laughs> that we had. But I'm, I'm going to address the kind of the kind of the elephant in the room in a sense um, and, and, and get your perspective on this and, and talk about or at least ask the question, uh, you know, what would compel a white female athlete, student athlete to consider attending an HBCU campus? I'm sure it's happened already. I'm not going to assume that that's never happened. I know it has. I don't know of anybody, but I know it's happened. What would be the compelling parts of what, what a white female student athlete consider an HBCU? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think, you know, one of the things that we're stressing with this event, but just in general with our whole mission is sports really just bring people together. doesn't matter anything at the end of the day when you're on the field, competing with your team, competing against the other team, you all have the same goal. And it really, really does bring people together. And 
any way, shape or form. So I think, you know, anybody that's even considering an HBCU and wants to learn more, and we've stressed from the beginning, this is an all inclusive event. We want parents, we want athletes of different, you know, sports, religions, uh, races, no matter who it is to, to attend this event, because the point of it is to spread the word of HBCUs and what it is that they have to offer. And um, I think as a, a white female athlete, you know, I didn't personally attend an HBCU, but you know, I wish I knew more about HBCUs as I was going through my process. I wish I knew more about all different types of schools going through my recruiting process. So that's what we're really trying to do. So I would encourage anybody that's interested in getting recruited to attend the event. And I think that, you know, when you get down to the nitty gritty, um, when you're talking to your college coaches, this is something that you can, you know, on your recruiting trip or virtual recruiting trip right now, these are great <laughs> questions that you can be posing and, and, you know, check out rosters, see, see what's what, but at the end of the day, sports bring people together and, at, you know, they just want a winning team. Everybody wants a winning yeah. good team, you know, or that's yes. what we're concerned about. So, um, yeah. but as a white female student athlete, I think it's 100% you know, something that athletes should consider. And, you know, again, at the end of the day, you have to realize that not there's over 2000 schools in the U S not every single yes. school is going to be for every single person, but we want to put this in front of you to consider it. And, you know, this is something that we're going to continue to do with HBCUs, junior colleges, NAIA, and try to focus outside of the power five for a little bit to say, Hey, you know what? There's a lot of opportunity out there for a lot of student athletes for, scholarships for spots for whatever else it may be and we want to shed light on, on that pretty much i mean, i think the idea of, of of taking this outside of the power five which is seemingly all you can sit you all that's all you hear about and we certainly know yeah. that is not all that's out there to be offered uh and certainly in the recruiting process uh you, you want to feel like you are a part of something special that's what sports does as you say and the old proverbial saying a team together everyone accomplishes more i think if you can find that wherever um and you feel like you're a part of that uh it doesn't matter where you look so this would be a viable option no question but let's let's get into the let's get into the meat of this thing and and talk about the event itself i'm fascinated to learn more about uh your moderator and some of the panelists uh who will be featured on this webinar i think it'd be great to talk about them specifically so uh can you run down a couple of the key parts of this and the key persons involved and the key personnel involved with the event. Yeah, absolutely. Melvin, do you want to talk about it or do you want me to discuss? Well, I'll let you go over the moderator part since you're our moderator. I'm the moderator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> Welcome to me. <laughs> I am moderating the entire, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm moderating the entire show. So I will be, uh, you know, Melvin, this is Melvin's idea 100% of the way. So he's going to be doing a little bit of an intro and then I'm going to kind of dive into some of the questions and, um, you know, I've been doing some research on the coaches and just, you know, trying to figure out the best way to um, have these coaches be able to shed light onto their school, their sports, and just HBCUs all across the board. And I think the cool thing about what we're doing is we're allowing athletes and parents and whoever signs up for the panel to ask questions before they get on. Um, okay. So they're actually able to submit questions and we'll be going through those and figuring out, you know, the repeat questions. So, you know, our users or whoever's on the panel will actually be able to have a say in what what types of discussions that we're having with these coaches, which I think is pretty cool. Excellent. Well, Kirsten, you do know that if there are any fights or any interruptions, you as a moderator, you gotta you gotta stop all that nonsense. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna mess with you, Kirsten. I, I can guarantee you that that's not going to happen. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Now, panelists, you've got some very interesting panelists involved in this event. Can you talk about them a little bit? Yes, One of sir. which is a Super Bowl. Uh, I understand he's a Super Bowl champion, right? That's exciting. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of great panelists here. I mean, definitely a star studded uh, list, if I might say so myself. <laughs> you can. He's saying that because he got all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, this, this what you do about yeah. Melvin. That's what you do right here, okay? I would do that, but we're virtual, okay? So, uh, yeah. There you go. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> yes, sir. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I really wanted to make make it a, a special special emphasis on not only making sure that this panel covered diversity with 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 HBCUs, but really also covered inclusion too as well. I think it's very important that you both have diversity and inclusion. Which is the reason, which is the reasoning behind us having both men and women's uh, collegiate sports featured on our okay. panel. So okay. we have, I mean, we we have we have programs like North Carolina A and T. They're representing two 
uh, different sports. We have women's volleyball with Coach Hal Clifton. Um, I mean, he's done great things with the team. He's he's really he's led them to three three tournament uh, appearances, which has been absolutely phenomenal since with with their past record. Um, really an up and coming team. We have Coach Duan Ross. He's the program director of the track and field team at North Carolina A and T. They're three time MEAC champions. He is he's produced several uh, Olympian hopefuls. I mean, the list goes on and on about his accolades, what he's done with the with the program. I mean, they're up there with LSU when it comes down to competition. Yeah. So if yeah. that's anything about who they are and what level they, that they compete at, just to let you know that just because you go to an HBCU does not mean that your expectations from an athletic standpoint is any different. Right. right. And yeah. Excellent. And, and and I think that probably is a, a kind of a lingering thought. Well, if I go to HBCU, it's not going to be as competitive. I won't right. get I won't get coached as well. Uh, the competition is not the same. That's not true. And and I think you uh, clearly, clearly emphasized that and communicated that. Uh, this is an event that takes place tomorrow. Can we go into the details of how, when, what, where, and what? How do we get on it? And what, where do we find it? Um, uh, times, and all of that, so people are clear on what's going to happen tomorrow and how they get started on this, how they get going. Yeah, I just want to mention really quickly, we do have a, a football coach as well, men's basketball, oh. director of track and field, and, another, and a men's baseball coach. So we do have, we have six panelists in total. So like Melvin said, we're oh. trying to make it as inclusive as possible. Um, yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, you've got a variety of sports because, you know, we can sit here. And I know that I have sometimes I have a tendency to lean towards football and I got to stop that because <laughs> the world is brighter, <laughs> broader than just football. So that, that's yeah. good. That is fantastic. You have quite an offering and you got quite a job on your hand to moderate all that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm ready be for fun. it. Yeah. Yeah, I exactly. Know. And and uh, Reggie Barlow's he played for the Buccaneers and, and won the Super Bowl and everything. So he's he's the football coach that'll be on. So we're excited to have him, but we're excited to have everybody else as well. Um, you know, yeah. it's it's we're we're just excited in general. But the event is tomorrow, October fourteenth. Um, it is at eight p.m. and it will be on Zoom. So you can go to lrtsports.com, hit on the workshops tab, and then at, at the top of the workshops tab, it'll have an event about. Uh, the HBCU experience coaches panel and people could register that way. So it's super easy. Excellent. It's free, you know, it's free for everybody. Excellent. There's no, no charge, right. no payment, no nothing. Um, right. And we're just really here again to just ask these coaches as many questions as possible, have them respond and, and really have our audience learn more about the HBCU experience. Uh, of course, from an athletic perspective, but just from an all around perspective, athletics, academics, culture, and everything else that goes into, you know, attending an HBCU. So a student, parents, uh, coaches that want to learn more about this should probably have their questions ready because they'll have a chance to ask those questions and they'll have the folks right in front of them that might be able to answer some of those questions that they have. Yes, yeah, so we so we have it so they can when they're when they register they can ask the questions ahead of time. That's why we're encouraging people to you know register earlier. Um, we're not going to have people asking questions during the actual panel. Okay. Um, but okay. ahead of time, we want people to submit their questions so we can go through them and then we can have just a smooth process. Okay, that sounds excellent. So this uh, again event is tomorrow evening, eight o'clock Eastern time. Correct. Eastern, correct. 8 p.m. Eastern <laughs> time for those. Because <laughs> yeah. I have to, I have to believe, I'm out here in the Pacific Northwest, so I have to get my, yeah. my act together and say, okay, oh, where am I? Okay, so I know that yeah. I'm going to be I'm going to be ready to go at 5 p.m. This sounds yeah. exciting, guys. It, it's been a wonderful series of conversations with you, Melvin, uh, also Kirsten. Fascinating. Um, I'm excited to see this thing get off the ground. Uh, tomorrow evening and uh, I want to wish you guys the best I think it's gonna be a fantastic event we certainly will be putting this out to all the folks that we know and, and certainly should be there and take advantage of the information and the knowledge that's going to come from this particular event the HBCU experience Kirsten Melvin again pleasure to have you guys okay and wish you the best and we'll be we'll be watching and uh, maybe we'll have a follow-up conversation as to how things went and uh, for future things that are going on with LRT Sports. Awesome, thank you, David, appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much. And we'll be sure to put, uh, we'll put this up and make sure people know where to go and how to get the information. And so they'll be a part of this, okay? Thank you for joining us on The Real.